Hey folks, Math Mr. Barnes here bringing another wicked awesome math video. This one on limits that involve uh, making a common denominator. As always, if you like this video, smash that like button, baby. That was completely uncalled for. I'm terribly sorry. Um, but if you liked that, give me a sub. So, as always, guys, um, you know, we're making some videos. We're having some fun. If this helps you, please help me out and spread the word for my love of math and how much of an idiot I actually am. So, um, if you like this video in any way, tell a friend. So, um, in this video, back to the business at hand. In this video, we are talking about some um, limits with common denominators. So, I've got one here. And obviously, the biggest thing to look for when you have this thing, uh, limits with common denominators, if you, is you have two um, fractions. Often they're rational expressions added together. Rational just means algebraic fractions is a fancy way of saying that. So um, most often than not, they're gonna involve some level of factoring. So I do have that with this one. So this is a product sum example where you have add to get um, negative four and multiply to get 12. So you know if you've reached this far in math, I'm not gonna insult your intelligence. But if you struggle with factoring, which is not uncommon, I have a lot of students who do, um, then you can go back and you know literally Google factoring worksheet and you'll find a ton of stuff. Or you can look on my channel and see what's happening with all that. So um, let's go ahead and factor this guy. So it adds to give us negative four and multiplies to give us 12. So that would be x minus six and then x plus two. Now I should mention this actually, this is a different type of indeterminate form. We're used to seeing zero over zero, but this is actually infinity plus infinity. So when you have a number over zero plus a number over zero, so infinity plus infinity. Um, but again, don't get caught up in those little details. Um, well, I shouldn't say that, but like, this video is focused on not necessarily like the what is happening, it's how to do it, all right? So let's first of all focus on that because that's most important, like this is what you're gonna actually have to do it on a test, so, but this is a, still an indeterminate form and we can still use our brains to be able to figure out that, you know, x minus two goes to negative two, therefore we're expecting x plus two to cancel, all right? So, and that's why, precisely why it showed up in both of these brackets. So now my next step is to go ahead and find that said common denominator. So I always ask myself this question when I'm finding a common denominator for algebraic limits. I don't just multiply them, that's not my technique. Sometimes you can do this cross multiplication and that's good for definition of derivative, but not good for this. What I look for is I ask myself the question, how can I get these to be the same? So this one has an X plus two, this one already has an X plus two. So I've satisfied the X plus two, they're in both. Well, this one has an X minus six, this one does not have an X minus six. So what I wanna do is I wanna multiply this fraction by X minus six, and there's my x plus two, and then multiply it again on the bottom by x minus six. So that will give me a beautiful common denominator. And again, the order is not important. I have them backwards. So x minus six, x plus two, or x plus two times x minus six, as long as they're both multiplied and they're exactly the same. So now I can go ahead and write this over one big denominator. So I'm gonna do this, x plus two, x minus six. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this out. So x plus six, x minus six, plus 32. So again, I'm trying to give you a heads up about some of the common mistakes. One of the things I see, my, uh, see often in my class is students get really excited at this step and they say, oh my God, I got an x minus six on the top and x minus six on the bottom, cancel out, boom goes the dynamite, I got my answer. No, okay, 
Look at this thing that we did up here. This is like, I want you to show me the way kind of thing. The way is x plus two must cancel. So before we cancel top bottom, I say this a thousand times in my classroom I'm doing this stuff, the top must be simplified first. So this thing has to be expanded out, combined, and like tidied up supremely in order to make this thing work, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is expand out this bracket. So it's x squared, and this of course, I'm gonna do it the long way, but if you know this, this is these are conjugates, so you can do the flu, as you probably watched in one of my other conjugate videos, because you guys are all subscribed, right? Right? So I got x squared, x times x is x squared, and then outside is 6x, inside is plus 6x, so the minus 6x and the plus 6x, those are gonna cancel. And then I'm left with six times negative six, which is minus 36, plus 32. And then the bottom, we just rewrite, hoping miraculously that that x plus two is going to cancel. So then I get left with limit as x goes to negative two. And then I've got this 36 plus 32, which is minus four. So I get x squared minus four. I'll divide it by x plus two, x minus six. And then I'm going to do a little old factoring technique, which I love, called difference of squares. So difference of squares occurs when you have a square, a square term minus another square term. So four is a perfect square, so is x squared. So we can write them as x minus two, x plus four. So that factoring technique is called difference of squares, and I'm sure you've seen it by now. And then, what we want to do is, like I predicted, up at the very top, x plus 2 is going to cancel. Well, that's exactly what's happening right here. That x plus 2 is going to cancel. And then we can rewrite. And we're ready to sub. And like I said many times before, this step kind of optional. But if you want a nice, beautiful answer, this will help you out. So then I'll sub the negative 2 in. Negative 2 minus two, and then negative two minus six. And that ends up being negative four over negative eight, or a beautiful one over two. So that's my first example. I'm gonna do another one now. Um, let me just check the time there yet. So um, only about seven minutes in, so that's not too bad. So let's do another example, very similar to this one. And um, as always guys, like, if you want to pause the video at any time, my suggestion will be a great way to study. Pause the video. All right, so let's have a look at the second example here. And again, we got a uh, infinity minus infinity situation. So if I put five in here, I'm gonna have infinity. And then five over here, I'm also gonna have infinity. Um, and again, not necessary to show that in my opinion. Other teachers may disagree, but we'll see. Um, so do whatever your teacher asks you to do, basically. So let's go ahead and let's start factoring this guy up. And again, we know what's gonna happen. X minus five is gonna cancel, comes from this. So we're hoping that that's going to develop out of this. So we wanna factor this guy right here. And you can see I made a mistake and that's why this video is shagged up. So I apologize if it jumps around a little bit, but I'm gonna have to do some major editing after this. Um, so I end up with adds to give me negative nine, multiplies to give me 20, so that is x minus five, and then x minus four. So you can see that that's no fluke that that happened. We wanna make sure that we have that in both of these because that's, that's what we wanna cancel, right? So it has to be in our common denominator. So the next thing we wanna do, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in both, but it helps us out if it does. Next thing we wanna do is find the actual common denominator, and this is why we get the name of this video. So again, I ask myself what's missing here. It's an x minus four. So I multiply this one by x minus five on the bottom here, and I multiply by x minus four over x minus four. And over here, I do absolutely nothing. So I just leave it alone, just like that. So it's already matched to have the common denominator, so I don't have to. 
So this one, I'm going to sort of put it over the common denominator, but in this step, I'm also going to distribute up this x, okay? So I'm going to go x squared minus 4x and then minus the 5 on the top. I'll divide it by x minus 5, x minus 4, all on the bottom. So I combine my denominators and I just simplify the top. So again, don't get excited about wanting to cancel stuff right away or anything like that. We want to make sure the top is fully conditioned and ready to rock before we do anything top bottom. So again, we need to factor this one. This is another add multiply. So it adds give me negative 4 and multiplies give me negative 5. So what makes that work is x minus 5 and x plus 1. So if you add those together, you get negative, five, or negative 4, you multiply them, you get negative 5. And there's always a hint on the bottom and what we need to cancel and what a factor should be. So you're thinking that x minus 5 should be in this factor, which it is. So then we can cancel. And then we go ahead and rewrite x minus 4. And we sub a 5 in, so 5 plus 1 all over 5 minus 4. And that ends up being 5 plus 1 is 6 divided by 1, and it's just 6. All right, everyone, another math video. After a long day in school, I'm back here making a few math videos, so I appreciate everyone watching. If this helps you in some tiny way or a big way, I'd appreciate if you could smash that like bucket. Uh, bucket smash that like button and um, give me a subscri uh, subscription I'm trying to reach my goal of 100k i'm very far away 85k away but you know what everyone can make a difference thanks for watching and i will see you guys in class